Welcome to Everything Financial Radio. This is the Legacy Radio Network. My name is Dennis Tubergen, your host. I am here every week at this time. If you're an old listener, welcome back. If you're a new listener, glad you tuned in. I've got a terrific show lined up for you this week. I am very, very excited to have back on the program with me today Mr. Gerald Salente. Many of you know Mr. Salente as the Trend Research Journal publisher. Uh, Mr. Salente has been spot on for uh, many, many years in identifying new trends, uh, not only in the United States, but worldwide. Uh, during my interview with him today, we're going to get his take on trends, some of which are downright disturbing. But uh, Mr. Salente is a very bright and colorful guy. I know you're going to enjoy the interview. Also, in the second segment of today's program, I am going to talk to you about what the Mississippi River can teach us about the U.S. economy. I know that may sound like it's way out there, but Richard Mayberry wrote a piece titled The River is a Socialist, and I learned a lot from the article. I know you will, too, and it teaches us a lot about the U.S. economy and where it might be headed. Also this past week, the Wall Street Journal published an article talking about pensions. Ford Motor Company putting $5 billion into its pension plan this year due to low interest rates, almost as much as they invested in infrastructure last year. Uh, Boeing, Dow, to name a couple of other companies, Verizon in the same boat. We'll talk about how the Fed policies is affecting pension, not only in the private sector, but also in the public sector. Also, I'm going to give you some math proof that the money madness will have to stop soon. Imagine that you have a $25,000 annual income, you have household debt of $160,000, that would approximate the current relationship between total federal government direct revenues and total official government debt, and on top of that, you've promised to pay some elderly family members some income as well as pay for their health care, that's going to take another eighty grand a year, and you have $25,000 a year to spend. This is is not only unsustainable in the long term, it's unsustainable in the near term. I'm going to fill you in in the last segment of today's program. Before we get to the show today, though, I want to quickly remind everyone that we have a brand new report out for 2013. It's titled 2013, The Retirement Rules Have Changed. You can go to the website, mybest2013.com, and request your copy just need to enter your name and address. We'll be glad to send you this report free of charge. The website, again, are the words my best and the numbers 2013. So mybest2013.com. Also, we are conducting at the East Beltline campus of West Michigan University here in Grand Rapids. Uh, I should say Western Michigan University here in Grand Rapids. Starting on February 29th and continuing for three weeks on Tuesday nights, a class titled New Retirement Rules, and in the class we talk about private sector debt levels, public sector debt levels, deficit spending. What does all this mean for you and your nest egg, and what should you be doing now to protect yourself? It is purely educational. I would invite you to go to newretirementrules.com to learn more. Newretirementrules.com is the website. You can uh, register as long as space remains. Also, Everything Financial Radio now available on iTunes. Go to the iTunes store, search under Everything Financial Radio. The shows are free. You can also go to everythingfinancialradio.com to listen to past interviews with many of our guest experts. I am pleased to have back with me on the Everything Financial Radio show Mr. Gerald Salente. Uh, Mr. Salente is publisher of the Trends Research Journal. And, uh, Gerald, always a, pr a pleasure to speak with you, and thank you for joining us, and welcome back. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me back. Hey, in your winter 2013 Trends Journal, which uh, I very much, uh, I don't know if I enjoyed reading it, but it was eye-opening, you talk about the Great Awakening 2.0 that will precede the Second American Revolution. Can you explain what you mean to our listeners? What happened before the First American Revolution <laughs> was that there was an awakening, a, re a religious revival that hit the colonies, and the revival was that people were responsible for their own salvation. They didn't look toward a hierarchy in a, in a church or a religion to decide for them how they should behave or act. That's if you believe in, your own, in, in salvation to begin with. And it was also a breaking away of that there was only one religion or one church that everybody should follow. 
the second part of that awakening took its form in rebelling against nobility. Because just as there was a hierarchy in the churches, of course there was the hierarchy of you know, King George the Third and all the royalty and his people that were running the colonies. And the awakening was they're no better than I am. And there's no such thing as royal blood. Blood is blood. And that's from the works of Thomas Paine and others came out of that great awakening. Well, we're going through the same thing right now. Our prime ministers and presidents and chancellors our senators, our congressmen, they're treated like royalty. You look, at, you look at the behavior when a motorcade comes screaming through town. It's just like the old days when you watch those movies with the royal coaches running over people to get the nobility to where they had to go. You look at the presidents and the secretaries of this and that when they're waving from their jumbo chariots and to a bunch of flunkies down below. Every time these cats show up, man, there's a red carpet rolled out, and there's some flunkies dressed up in uniforms that have to salute them. And when every time a foreign leader comes, oh, it's a big deal, you know. And, and, it's the, and here we have a nation that was built on the opposition of this. This is what everything that this country was opposed to with the founding fathers. And now it's reverted back to a nobility. All you had to do was watch the inauguration. You could call it a coronation. Mm. And so the people, as they're losing everything, because there's, you know, this country isn't what it used to be by a long shot. You look at the jobs that are being created. They're barely paying a living wage. The middle class is shrinking. These aren't numbers that I'm making up. You look at the at, at uh, median household income since the Great Recession has begun, or, or depression for many people, you know, it's down over 10 percent. You're looking at kids graduating college with university degrees and worthlessness, and, and you know, 10, what, 10? On average, $30,000 worth of debt to $150,000 to more education. And they have jobs, 50 percent of them, that are paying, you know, minimum wage. So the awakening is that people are going to start rebelling against the system. And you're seeing it in many different forms. We also believe that with this raping of the Constitution, where you have this National Defense Authorization Act, where you have these hearings going on last week about uh, the drone strikes, El Presidente could say that, hey, take out that guy or those people around him, American citizen or not, this country or anywhere, kill them. Oh, yeah, that's what the language says. Not in that language. They use white boy shoe language to cover it up. So you, you have now, and you're seeing it not only in America, it's going on in Europe particularly, and in this country it's going to happen. You're going to start seeing people revolting against the systems. And I believe a lot of these laws that are abrogating our Constitution are being put in place with the full knowledge that the economies are going to continue to decline, conditions are only going to worsen, and the gap between the haves and the have-nots will continue to widen. And the awakening is going to be, I believe, a move toward a second American revolution. But this one, not of guns and armies, but of brains and heart and spirit. Well, if you're just joining us, we are chatting with Mr. Gerald Salente, publisher of the Trends Research Journal. Gerald, we have about two and a half minutes left in this segment. In your most recent issue, you also discuss a trend that I'll call a secession trend, and it kind of ties into what you were talking about. What is this trend, and how does it manifest itself further? Well, you saw after the election, over a million people petitioned the White House to break the nation up. This country is too big to fix and too broken to fix. They can't, they can't operate it. You have a gang of 535 people. That's how big Congress and Senate is combined, telling 315 million people how to tie their shoes. We're going to see this nation break up in the future, we believe, 
that these secession movements are going to be real. And they're not, you know, these right-wing nut kind of movements. There are people that realize that whether it's, hey, remember that leave no child behind? Remember that, those great wars they started in Iraq and Afghanistan? Hey, I got one. Why don't we do a war on drugs? How about health care? Everything that the central government creates is a failure and a costly one in lives and money. So you're going to start seeing breakups. And it's, again, not only in the United States. As we speak, there are about 240 of them going on worldwide, with, the, with Scotland and Caledonia being two of the ones that are coming very close to fruition. So we could see this nation breaking up the USSA, breaking up like the USSR did. Well, uh, Gerald, we have about a minute left in this segment. If someone wanted to learn more about your work, what would you have them do? Go to trendsjournal.com, trendsjournal.com, and uh, we publish the Trends Journal quarterly. This last issue is 60 pages, advertising-free. If you want to see history, history before it happens, we guarantee you won't find it anywhere else than, than in the Trends Journal. And also, we have a discount request for the people that are having a difficult time making ends meet or unemployed. So we make it available to everyone so they could plan ahead before the future arrives. I always enjoy reading my copies, so I'd encourage the listeners to go check it out. We will continue our conversation with Mr. Gerald Salente, publisher of the Trends Research Journal, when Everything Financial Radio returns. Stay with us. Yeah. 